tell you I cried for three hours last night. They may not tell you I haven't been sleeping well. They may not tell you I've lost my appetite, right? And then we get to the red light, the psychological, right? If someone's experiencing, maybe they have bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, and they're experiencing severe paranoia. Maybe they're experiencing auditory or visual hallucinations. They're not likely to share that with you. And so I say that just to know that signs and symptoms kind of go across those three domains. I'm gonna go back to anxiety and depression because those are the most common uh, mental health diagnoses. When a person is experiencing signs and symptoms, if they have been experiencing those signs and symptoms for at least two weeks, two weeks or more, that's when we want to start to get concerned. That's when we want to encourage them to make a therapy appointment, to talk to their primary care physician, even to use the EAP, the Employee Assistance Program, with their job or their spouse or partner or if they're, as a child, they can use it from their parents. How many of you have EAP at your job? Most of us have it. It's an amazing benefit. It's confidential and anonymous. A lot of times people don't believe that. Only about 4% of people actually use the EAP. And it's there for this very reason. So if you have a friend or family member who's experiencing sleeping too much, sleeping too little, eating too much, eating too little, um, maybe they are angry, irritable, agitated. I tell people, especially anger, if you think about this, anger is sadness as bodyguard, okay? Can you hold this for me, Jay? So if you think about anger as an eight foot tall giant, and it's like, okay, you come at me, I wish you would, I'm ready, right? Think about sadness as a two year old or three year old child who's hanging around anger's leg and they're scared and they're crying. Because we see anger, we either, as humans, when we see anger, we're either going to freeze, we're going to fight, or we're going to flee. Either one of those very human responses, we miss the anger, the irritability, and that is often a telltale sign that someone's de dealing with anxiety or depression or that they've experienced some sort of trauma. And so we want to pay attention to that. So two weeks or more, if they've had signs and symptoms, physical, behavioral, psychological. If someone's experienced a trauma, if it's four weeks beyond the point of trauma, then we definitely want to encourage them to seek help. It's my turn to ask him a question. I'm gonna leave before you do. Oh, don't leave. I'm, I'm gonna come up with a good one for okay. you. So, this, this is a good one, because you're a parent. You told me earlier you've got a number of children. Oftentimes, people come to our office and they're concerned about their child. But then when we get down to talking about it, they don't want their child to get help. Because they feel like as a parent, they've done something wrong, it's going to bring stigma or shame to the house, um, to their child. What would you say to encourage other parents to, if something's happening with their child, to get support and help. Well, how would you encourage another parent to do that? It's like, oh my God, we didn't talk about this. No, we didn't. That's good. I think the first thing is um, you got to understand, and, and as a parent, you always like, I have to do what it takes to make sure my child is okay, right? And, you know, in certain things, um, that you can do, right? And that you need a doctor for. And that's one of those things. And I remember my son went through a couple of things coming back from COVID. He didn't want to walk into the building. And we had conversations about it, but I wish I had to call the therapist and now he's going through that right now. And, but at the same, at the time I was like, well, I need to talk to him. And I talked to him a couple of times, a couple of times, but I think he just fought through it and went in, you know, but that damages him, I think, in the future. And I want him to understand that he can talk about his feelings, his, his thoughts, and all the things that he's going through. And we can come up with a plan to, to help him get uh, you know, there. I'm gonna give you all a couple of resources 
Um, I don't. Everybody, pull your telephone out, your cell phone. When you've got your cell phone out, just say amen or raise amen. your finger or wave your hand. I want you to put this telephone number in your phone. Let me know when you're ready. Ready. Ready? 1 800 273 8255. 1 800 273 8255. If you're in a pinch and you can't remember all of it, 1 800 273 TALK. That is the number to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's available 365, 24-7. How many of you live in Mecklenburg County? Anybody live in Mecklenburg County? A couple people. I want you to put this other number in your phone. 704-566-7000. Seven zero four three over seven zero four five six six three four one zero. That is the Mecklenburg County mobile crisis. If you or someone you know or love is experiencing a mental health concern, mobile crisis will come to their location. They can do a mental health assessment. They can do a suicide assessment. It's free. Our tax dollars pay for it and also a black woman is their CEO. She's a wonderful young woman, uh, Keisha Ginn. So Jay, I'm not sure who's next. Um, I wanna go on with the rest of the program that they have. I hope that you've learned something tonight that you didn't know about mental health, that you didn't know about suicide and how it's impacting our community. I hope that each of you will agree to get a checkup from the neck up. I hope that each of you will remember that self-care is not selfish and that you will begin to implement self-care on a regular basis for yourself. Thank you for having me tonight. Please give it up again for Jay and what he's doing with Access. And I don't know who gets the microphone next. MC. All right. Just say good night. Thank good night. You. Come on up. Hey, you